an ordinary suburban home. It could be anywhere. But this is Railway Station Street in Butcher, number 17. In the road, remnants of a column of Russian armor that rolled into town on February the 27th and mercilessly attacked by Ukrainian forces. The firefight caused huge explosions, leaving nearby trees bearing strange fruit. I'll tell you what comes to my mind being here is what it must have sounded like. The noise of all these vehicles all along the street just going up. The explosions, the fire, the inferno. It must have been horrible for people hiding in their basements on either side of the street. The area is in Ukrainian hands now. But the Russians, who survived the attack back in February and fled, returned a week later. Their pride in pieces all around. This is number 31, Railway Station Street. And on the fence is written the word, people, in the hope the soldiers would be kind. Viktor Herinenko, like most suburban dads, is into DIY except his roof repairs are the result of war damage. One day under Russian occupation, three soldiers came calling, ordering him, his son and a neighbor off the roof. They fired shots into the ground to hurry us up, he tells me. They said they were going to kill us. Then they ordered us to lie face down on the ground, put your pig faces in the dirt, they said. Then they fired some shots close to my head. I could feel the sand that the bullets kicked up touch my hair. Then I heard the soldiers say, we can get rid of the two older ones and spare the younger one. Then a third soldier said, no, they were just fixing the roof. Other times they cowered in the cramped vegetable cellar. When they heard the Russians in railway station street, The comfort of normality. It's a prize for civilians in war, just being able to feed the chickens. Especially after what Victor's wife, Tanya, went through when her menfolk were ordered off the roof. My husband and son stood with their hands up, saying, don't shoot. Woman, stay, they commanded. You go outside, I take you down. So I stood in the yard, and I heard two shots. It was so hard, I thought they were dead. I don't know how I'm going to walk around the streets anymore, after everything that's happened. I'll remember the blasts and us hiding and the shrapnel and bullets flying. I can't explain everything I feel, I can't explain everything we went through here. And what of her son Roman, just 15, subject of a mock execution? Hey. How will he cope with the horrors he's seen as he gets older? The first corpses I saw were of Russian soldiers, he says. I went outside and I saw the burnt body of a man. He had no head. I'll never forget. This memory will stay with me forever. At the end of March, the Russians retreated from railway station street. But they had parting gifts. I heard several shots from the next street, he says, and people were screaming. It was clear a lot of people were being killed in the final days of the occupation. In Yablunska street, in a school and a nearby apartment. This is Yablunska or Apple Tree Street today. And this is how the Russians left it.
How does a community, a nation, recover from collective trauma? Perhaps the only solution for the residents of Railway Station Street is time.